When you want to repeat a piece of code over and over again, you need a loop. Welcome, I'm Kons, and in this video you're going to learn how to use the while and for loops in your Python programs. There are two types of loops in Python, the while loop and the for loop. And we're going to start with the while loop. The while loop repeatedly executes a piece of code as long as a certain condition evaluates to true. And we're going to start off with the first example right now. So here we have the variable x and we assign 0 to it. Then let's print x and now we would like to state a while loop that adds 1 to x as long x is less than 10. So we start off with the keyword while and after keyword while we have a space and then we formulate the condition. And the condition is x less than 10 and indented under this while statement we have the code that will be repeatedly executed by the while loop as long as the condition x less than 10 is true. And we're going to enter x plus equal 1. That means we're going to add 1 to x in every, every time we go through that loop. And every time we execute that code, that is called an iteration. So, and at the end, we're going to print x again. So if we run that code, we will see that we first get the result 0 and then the result 10. So to sum everything up, before each iteration, the while loop checks if the condition here, x less than 10, evaluates to true and then executes the code indented under the while statement. So in the first iteration, x is equal to 0 and 0 is less than 10 and then we add 1 to x and then x stores 1. And then we go back to the top of the loop and check if 1 is less than 10 and that is also true. And we carry on until x equals 9. So when x equals 9, we still check 9 is less than 10, which is true. Then we add 1 to 9, which is 10. Then we go back to the top of the loop and we check is 10 less than 10, which is not true. And therefore, we're go not going to execute this code and go on to the next statement in our code, which is the print statement of x. And then we get this output 0 and 10, because before the while loop, x was 0. And after the while loop, x is 10. In contrast to other programming languages, Python allows you to add an else statement to a while loop. So let's check back on our example here where we iterate as long as x is less than 10. We're going to add an else statement on the same level as the while statement under the indented code of the while loop. And the code in the else statement will only be executed once and that is when this condition up here evaluates to false. So we are going to add a print statement here. Print x is larger or equal to 10. And we're also going to end a, enter a print statement up here where we state that x is less than 10. And when we run that code, we can see first we start with x equal to 8 and we see 8 is less than 10, 9 is less than 10, and then we execute the code under the else statement, which states that 10 is greater or equal to 10. When you are new to Python, it is hard to remember all the functions and new concepts. So therefore, I created several Python cheat sheets you can pick up for free as a high resolution PNG in my Gumroad shop. And you can even get a printable PDF version in my Gumroad shop for a small amount of money or as a tier one or higher Patreon subscriber. So make sure to pick up your Python cheat sheets and check out the links down below in the description. During an iteration, we can tell the while loop to skip certain parts of the code and start a new iteration. And we do that with the continue statement. So in our example here, where we increase x until it is 10, we're going to enter another x plus then plus one. And this will increase our x by two every time we execute the code under the while loop. But now we only want to increase the value of x by 2 until it is larger than 7. After that we want to only increase it by 1. So for that we enter an if statement if x greater than 7 and then enter continue. And we remember we started off with 3579 and if we execute that code now we see we start off with 357 then x is greater than 7 and we go to continue and this x plus 1 is not executed anymore after x is greater than 7. 
So we can see three, five, seven, and then eight, nine, because that part is not executed anymore and is skipped by the continue. Sometimes a condition of a while loop can become pretty complex. And it might be easier to tell the while loop when to stop rather than how long it should iterate. And therefore exists the break statement, which ends a while loop. So when we go back to our example, we have x less than 10 and we add one to it. Now we're going to turn that into an infinite loop and we do that only once. And we also going to print our x, print x, and this will turn into an infinite loop because this condition is never false because true is never false. So let's stop that. And we would like to enter a break statement here. So if x is greater or equal to 10, we want to end that loop and then execute that. And we can see now our loop is not an infinite loop anymore because x is now greater or equal to 10 after 10 iterations. And we can see the normal output we would have expected. So if you have several conditions that should end a while loop, you can use the break statement instead of formulating a very complex while loop condition. The second type of loop in Python is the for loop. And in contrast to a while loop, which runs until a certain condition evaluates to false, a for loop iterates over a sequence of data, such as a list, set, tuple, or string. So in this example here, we have the string s that contains hello exclamation mark. And now we are going to use a for loop to access each single element of that string. So first we enter the statement for, which indicates that we're going to start a for loop, then c, which is the so-called iteration variable, and the iteration variable is only accessible inside the loop. Then we enter in, and then our iterator, which is our sequence of data, here is a string. And now in every iteration, c will contain one character of that string. So if we enter print c and run that, we can see that in each iteration, another character of that string is assigned to c. And as the string is an order data type, because every element has a unique index, we're going from zero up until the length of the string. We can also iterate over list sets and tuples in Python because all of them are sequenced data types. So here in this example, we have a list going from A to E and a set containing all characters from A to E. And first up, we would like to iterate over the list. So we enter another four then enter C as our iteration variable, then in L, which is our iterator, colon, and then enter print C. And if we run that, we can see it iterates over the whole list and gives back A, B, C, D, E in our output because we are going from A in, at index zero to E at index four. In contrast to lists, sets are unordered. So if we enter 4C in S, print C to access each individual element of a set, we probably won't find the same order every time we execute it. Because a set doesn't have an order, the elements you access during a while loop are random. So we start off with B, E, A, C, D. However, we won't access an element twice in a set when we iterate over it. But we have to remember there's no order. And if you need a refresher on Python sets, check out this video over here. If you like this video so far, make sure to give this video a like so it can spread to more people and more people can start to learn about Python loops. It is often necessary to execute a code for a certain amount of times. You could do that with a while loop and you count up and then have a condition that only iterates until this condition is not met anymore. But you could also use a range in a for loop. So here we have an example and we enter for i as an iteration variable in and then we use the range function and enter the amount of times this loop should iterate. And then we print i and let it run and we can see this loop runs from zero to nine. So a range is an ordered iterator that returns the numbers starting from zero up to the number you've stated. You can also start the range at a different number. So we could enter three and then run that code. And we can see it starts at three and goes up to nine. We can also add a third argument to range 
and tell range we only want every second number. So if we run that, we can see we start off with 3, 5, 7 and then go to 9. So if we have range only with one argument, that is the stop. If we have a range with two arguments, that is start and stop. And if we have range with three arguments, we have start, stop and the step width. The range function can also be used to iterate over all indices of a list. So for that we enter for i for index in range 0 up until the length of l colon print l bracket i and this will print the value at the index i of our list l. And if we run that we can see we got all the elements of our list accessed by the index. We can also modify the list elements while we iterate over the list when we use the index of the list. So now we would like to add a 1 to each list element. So we're going to remove the print statement and add plus equal 1 and then print the list after the loop. And we can see after the loop every element was increased by 1. And if we use the range function we could also enter a step so only every second element of the loop will be changed. So this time we enter step 2 and when we have a look at the result only every second element was increased by 1. If you want to access the value and the index of a list at the same time you don't have to use range and then access the element individually you can use the enumerate function. So instead of range we're going to enter enumerate l and then we need a second iteration variable and python allows us to add a second or even more iteration variables which is pretty cool and here we're going to enter element and then we get our index i and our element and if we print that print i element and then let that run we can see we get the index and each element in a loop without using the bracket operator. So down here we have 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3 and so on. We can also iterate over dictionaries in Python. So if we have a look at this example where we have the dictionary a0, b1, c2 and d3 and enter 4k in d and print k, this will iterate over all keys in the dictionary. So if you don't have, a, have anything specified after the dictionary variable name, it will iterate over the keys. To make it clearer, you can always enter keys dot keys after the variable name in the iteration statement of the for loop. So if we enter that, we get the exact same result. We have all the keys from A to D. You can also iterate over all the values of a dictionary. For that, you enter for v in d values and then enter print v and if we run that we see that we iterate over all the values 0 to 3. And Python dictionaries are actually an ordered data type since the Python version 3.6 and above. So the order you state up here will also be preserved in the iteration order of a for loop. We can also iterate over key value pairs of Python. So down here we're going to start a new for loop with 4, enter k, comma v. So this time we have two iteration variables which is pretty unique to Python and very useful. And then we enter in d items which will return all the key value pairs as a list of tuples. And then we enter print k, comma v and if we run that we can see we get all the key value pairs we have stated above here in the order we have stated them above here a0, a b1, c2 and d3. And if you need a refresher on Python dictionaries check out this video over here. You can also have loops inside loops in Python and this is called nested loops and it is pretty common if you work with more dimensional data such as matrices. So in this example I specified a two-dimensional list which contains three sublists and the sublists contain 0 to 2, 3 to 5 and 6 to 8. And now I would like to print this list in a two-dimensional fashion using two for loops. 
So first up, we're going to uh, iterate over the y dimension of the loop. So the dimension going up. So we enter y in range three. And then inside that loop, we're going to loop over the x dimension, which are the elements inside the sublist. So this time we enter x in range three as well, because we have three elements in each sublist. And then we enter print L bracket Y bracket X. And we don't want a new line after each print statement. So we enter a custom end. And instead of a new line, we would like to print a space. After the for loop over the X dimension, I would like to print a new line such that every sublist is printed in one line. And then in the next line, the next sublet list is printed. And therefore I enter a print statement here, which is empty, which will just print a new line. And this only happens while we iterate over the y dimension and won't happen while we iterate over the x dimension. So if we run that down here, we can see we now have a two dimensional representation of our two dimensional list. If we would just print the list print L, we would see a completely different result, which prints the whole list in one line. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you've got any questions regarding Python loops, let me know down below in the comments. Don't forget to pick up your Python cheat sheets in my Gumroad shop or my Patreon with a big shout out to my Patreon subscribers. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I release a new video on Python programming and computer science. I wish you a fantastic day and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.